one of the first steps we need to go through before we can begin the course proper is to get our environment set up for, well, you development. Uh, well, if you don't have Rust installed on your system, I highly recommend that, uh, well, we start there first. Uh, so we're gonna come over here to uh, rustlang.org and uh, just click on get started. Uh, it should auto detect the system that you're on right now and give you the install command that you need to get going. So in this case, I'm on a Windows system right, you know, for this video right now, and it's suggesting that I use Windows subsystem for Linux. It also has a download link for Windows itself. I do recommend the 64-bit version if you have access, you know, if you have a 64-bit machine. Uh, if for some reason you're planning on running this on a different system, like for example, you're running this on a Raspberry Pi or you're SSHing into another computer and you're running these commands on there, uh, you can click on this link right here, other installation methods. That will take you to a, a Rust book that allows you to, um, to find where they are. Let's see if we just scroll down. Here is a list of all of them that you that you can possibly want. On any Unix-like system, you should be able to run this command here and get Rust up going. Uh, however, they have the binaries in the case that you need it uh, for pretty much everything. I do recommend Rust up if you uh, if you just have um, Rust C itself. Uh, I there there it's a little bit harder to follow along. Um, a lot of the commands we're going to be using uses cargo, which comes with rest up. Uh, as for uh, VS Code itself, which is going to be the editor of choice that I'm using for this course. Uh, and of course, you can use whatever editor you want, but if you want to follow along uh, exactly the way I have it, um, I'm going to be using the following extensions. Uh, so I have Better Tommel. Better Tommel is for our um, our crates.toml, our cargo.toml file. Uh, it just gives some like nice colors and makes things lined up a little bit nicer, and so you just don't have like a single tone uh, file. I'm also going to be using the crates, um, which just shows us what version number of a well a crate that we're installing and if it's out of date or not. Rust Analyzer is one of the most important Rust extensions that we can possibly have. It's going to be our language um, create, uh, a language extension. So it's going to basically help keep our code um, uh, set up and, and um, aligned properly. Uh, it's also going to be doing all of our checking. It, it actually goes in and tells, you know, shows us what the variables, what a content of a variable is. And basically it's our, it's our language server. Uh, it says that it's an alternative language server, with, um, but uh, I believe that almost everybody in the Rust community has switched over to Rust Analyzer these days, and I can't really imagine going back to just the Rust uh, language server these days anymore. Um, and then finally, I do have a um, an API set up for us. Uh, when we get to the project part of the course, we're going to be using Thunder Client just to sort of explore around a little bit. Uh, Thunder Client is uh, similar to Postman, if you've ever seen it, or like maybe a visual curl that runs inside of VS Code that allows us to just basically hit the API with GET and POST requests and sort of like just see what's happening. Uh, it's only going to be used just sort of like to see what the API requests are, so that way we can then go and implement them correctly in the code. Anyways, that's everything we need to get going and get started with Rust. So once you have everything up in there, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.